Good morning and welcome to the free Decision Point Trading Room. My name is Erin Swenlin and I am here with my father, Carl Swenlin. We've got lots of charts to show you. And as we have said in the title of our YouTube video, today we're going to make a case for a market top. Um, looking pretty much like the market's going to pull back to us and we'll explain why. All right, the Q&A box is for you. That is where you can put your symbol requests and questions. Um, please, only one symbol request per person. We barely get through them if we do anyway, so we wanna make sure everybody gets a chance to see their symbol done. And the chat room is for you. You can go in there and chat amongst yourselves, see what other traders are thinking of the market right now. Um, Usually a couple ideas get spread around in the chat room. So be sure when you do go in there, if you're going to chat, to use the drop down menu to send the chat message to everyone. Otherwise, it just goes to us and we do not monitor the chat room. I do have somebody in there monitoring. So go on in and give it a try. Okay, Dad, I think that covers all of our housekeeping. Let's go ahead and jump right into the signal tables. Okie doke. Here we go. Um, this is the symbol, uh, the signal table for the 26 market index sector and industry group indexes we follow. Uh, intermediate term and long term. Intermediate term. Uh, basically tracks the relationship of the Silver Cross Index with its 10-day moving average. If the, just like anything else, if it's, the index is below the moving average, it's a bearish, I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of myself. <laughs> this is the uh, intermediate trend model signal, which is when the a buy signal is when the 20 day moving average is above the 50 day moving average. And the long-term by signal is when the 50 day moving average is above the 200 day moving average. So as you can see here, uh, we're clean right across the board. And we're also, this is as good as it's gonna get. It doesn't get better than this. Now it can hold this for some time. It doesn't mean it's gonna have to automatically switch and start heading south, but uh, we're seeing some evidence that that is really gonna be the case on our bias assessment we uh here we go with the silver cross index relationship to its 10-day moving average above it's it's a bullish bias when it drops below it's a bearish bias the golden cross index uh, bias is bullish when it is above its 20-day move when the yeah, golden cross index is above its 20 uh, 20 day moving average so we're getting a little bit of us uh, we're still mo mostly bullish but it's starting to break down some here all right let's look at the sp500 through the eyes of the spy etf and uh as you can see uh, today it's broken down uh, somewhat and uh, not looking not looking all that bad either looking a little easier to get some perspective this is an all-time high in here and uh, uh, Friday made a very strong attempt to go better than the uh, all-time high So it's backing off. This looks toppy. Uh, again, we've got the PMO uh, was turned up on Friday and now it's turned down based on market action so far today. The um, participation index here, we look at the Silver Cross Index is at a, um, it's at, at the top edge of the normal range um, when it gets the, up here we, we expect it to turn down and 
we never know how bad it's going to get here. It didn't get so bad here. It did. So, uh, but right now, this is certainly adequate uh, activity for a market top. Notice all the, the stocks above their 20, 50, and 200 day moving averages uh, are trending downward in a very short term. Here are our primary indicators, the swindling trading offset for breadth and volume. Uh, notice we've got negative divergences on the short-term indicators, and uh, um, that would indicate a top coming at us. On the intermediate term, we have the intermediate term breadth momentum and volume momentum indexes, um, negative divergence on, on the breadth and uh, just confirmation on the uh, volume at this point. So right now, everything is configured for a top. We don't know for sure that it's going to, but it's not. this is not a good condition for these indicators to be. Okay, moving to the dollar index, UUP ETF, and uh, it has bottom, it had double bottom here, and it's made it basically reached its upside expectation. <clears throat> Don't know what it's apt to do beyond this, but uh, right, <clears throat> right now it's going to be consolidating a bit. Gold is right up near all-time highs, and um, it's, it's not doing much today, for sure. Um, <clears throat> When we look at gold, I like to emphasize the monthly chart of dollar gold. And you notice we have a basically parabolic advance going on here, um, possibly pulling back to this uh, trend line here, um, and maybe it'll continue higher. I'm just saying when it gets, you know, it starts getting vertical looking on the monthly chart. Uh, I, I get nervous, but I'm holding for sure uh, for a while at least. Now the gold, um, okay, this is the um, daily chart, one-year daily chart. And uh, let's see, again, we've got it's basically a, a flag consolidation here. Expectation would be a, a breakout to the upside. And I wanted to, where is my, no, I need to go back here and get the gold miners. Okay, gold miners ETF. Um, gold miners haven't done that well in the long term regarding, uh, you, you know, comparing it to gold. But right now, from this low here um, to that top is a 30% advance. The same uh, time period for gold is only a 17% advance. So the, the miners are picking up the pace at the time in the short to intermediate term, it looks like. Here's silver, uh, double top, and there's there's where the confirmation line will be drawn across there. Here's oil. Oil is uh, rising nicely, and energy sector is also doing nicely as well. TLT, 20-year Treasury bond ETF, um, rising trend here. Uh, it's broken down now, but it's after this top, we have it started to trend downward. Um, as we would expect, yields have picked up. Now, I'm not quite sure how this works, but uh, I was thinking that with the, with the Fed on an interest rate cutting binge, we'll say, uh, 
that yields would be going down, but no, the, the, uh, that's, this market doesn't believe uh, the Fed's going to do what people think it's going to do. That's what it says to me. Here's the um, yield array chart. We have everything from the one month to the 30 year. Notice here's the one and three month and they're up uh, higher than everything else. That is an inversion. Uh, but if you look at the inversion chart, which I don't have at this point, but the uh, the two and the 10 are not inverted. And that's what they normally look like, talk about inversions. So, and you notice that the last last week, it really bottomed nicely and emphatically. So it looks at this point as if yields are going to be going higher for a while. Here's Bitcoin um, in a downtrend, not not a not a vicious one by any means. And if you look at the weekly, we get a, a perspective. We've got a flagpole and a flag formation. It's a falling flag, which is the best at like it's building compression to go higher. So technically, this chart is is very bullish. And we get to the Magnificent Seven. Here we have Apple, um, all-time high uh, back in July. And uh, at this point, you notice we've got a, a reverse divergence. We have a, a top below a top, and here we have a, a top above, above a top. Uh, what that's saying is there's a lot of positive volume going into the stock, but it's not sufficient to get it up to equal or higher than this pre previous top here. Let's look at the monthly chart. Um, a, a bearish a rising wedge, long-term formation. Uh, it should have broken down. That's what we normally expect, and it didn't. It broke up. So at this point, it's consolidating above the formation, and uh, in that in that respect, in this time frame, it is a um, a, a bullish looking chart. Notice we have another. Well, we have a a negative divergence here. You know, it's these equal tops, and I got a top below a top on the PMO. Okay, here a top beneath the top, and basically another reverse divergence. We have a top above this top. That's not very much, but it's still significant that uh, that the volume is trying to push the price higher and it's not being able to do it. The Amazon monthly chart, I'm sorry, weekly chart. Um, we were thinking this uh, line of resistance support was significant at this point. I don't think it is anymore. It's broken above it and gotten below and currently below it, but who knows what it's going to do next. Uh, it is, I would say, let's just look at this low here as a outlier and think of it as a, possibly a high level consolidation at this point. Uh, PMO, weekly PMO is not looking healthy. You've got a it, it's got a top below the signal line. That's that's pretty negative. Google, Alphabet, uh, no divergences here. But we've got uh, this low uh, after this decline here, and look, it's, this still could be uh, doing a, a top here. So I'm not. Maybe get a re reverse head and shoulders out of this. It's a little early to tell, but that's the uh, best thing I can see right now. It's PMO is above the zero line. So yeah, this is nice positive action here. And it has recovered, we'll say from this uh, decline. Here's the, the weekly chart um, above, let's, above this rising trend line. This is where it gets a little crazy, it gets 
parts a little, a lot too far from the rising trend, and it reverts to the mean, back to the trend line, and it's um, again maybe we'll reestablish a, a, this stay within this uh, potential trend trend channel here. Meta, it's uh, broken. It's breaking into. Well, it's at, it was at an under day all time high today. Uh, this morning and uh, nice long consolidation here and it broke broke out so that that uh, implies a more bullish action to follow looking at the looking at the uh, weekly chart similar to Apple we've got a rising bearish rising wedge and it broke out above that panel so that's that's a, a bullish here's a negative divergence. And uh, that pulls against this chart. But so far, um, price wins out. And I'd say it's right at this point, it's a bullish chart. Microsoft um, not having the greatest time compared to the other mag sevens, uh, but it is in a, you've got a bottom above a bottom and above. And we got a, a top, top above the top, so rising trend line from the August low. Another rising wedge. This time, price broke down from the wedge, and now it's hugging the bottom of the wedge, trying to recapture it, possibly. But we have this rising trend, so at this point, that part of it looks bullish. This part doesn't. It's, it's really uh, heading downward and uh, the PMO. So internally, it's 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 weak in that long long term. Nvidia, um, basically a trading range here. Although it it's failed to capture the top of that, recapture the top of that range. But right now, at least uh, it's up uh, almost three and a half percent a day. Longer term, we've got the weekly chart, uh, the parabolic advance, the parabolic breaks down. This is like a 35% decline right in here. And uh, right now, I would say it's uh, trying to do a high, a high level consolidation, which is, which is bullish uh, longer term, basically. It's proven at this point that it, it's not likely to go down and, and test any of these uh, former levels of support. Tesla, the big news is they're getting ready to launch the uh, robo taxi. Show of hands, anybody that wants to do that, uh, don't put my hand up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so that's the big news on them right now. Um, uh, OBV, not good. We have the, the reverse divergence. Again, a lot of volume pour, pouring in. It can't get that um, price back up to match the former top. Long term, basically, it's, we've got sort of a trading range going here. Uh, it's a little jagged, uh, more wild this side, but Right now, it's looking like a trading range on the weekly chart. Okay, I've got I got two stocks to talk about that just, you know, I hear stocks and I look at the chart and I think, oh, that's interesting. I, I'll, I'll mention that in, the, in our trading room. Uh, UPS, uh, at this, in this, uh, this is the daily chart. Let's, uh, we, we can probably um, update it. There we go. So it's down, a downtrend in the one-year chart. Um, I always love looking at the weekly chart. Okay, what we have here, we have the COVID uh, period where UPS was on this way essential uh, company. And now that's over and it's giving some of that back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, 
let's look at the monthly chart. Okay. Now this this looks less uh, um, good, let's say. Uh, flagpole and uh, now it's falling off that. It's this is this is more than a this is a runaway flag. It's this is no longer a flag. It's it's probably going to back find support in this area. That would be what I would guess at this point. But look at the yield on this, almost five uh, percent. That's that's good. So I will be looking to see where this bottoms out. Maybe we'll get it up to maybe six percent before the decline is over. That's an interesting spot there. But right right now it's giving a lot, lot back. Yeah, this this is an outlier kind of advance, and it's it's got to get back into the reality. No, that's not what I wanted. Okay. And the other stock I was looking at is not, it's an it's a ETF. And then this was mentioned by Jared Dillian as a um, surrogate for commodities. And he has an idea that got, commodities are going to do really well. Okay. Is that there? Here's the weekly chart on XLB and uh, nice long consolidation here and a breakout. Let's go on to the monthly chart. You know, you look at this and this is, this has been a heck of a run from 2009. It's, it's had, it's had its uh, problems along the way, you know, pullbacks, but uh, it's, this is really looking strong at this point, rising above the signal line, well above the zero line, uh, looking very strong stock, not much of a yield. And any questions that come to mind, Aaron? Um, it looks like all symbol requests. I was monitoring it. Okay. Um, do either of you view um, the China huge stimulus package as something that is meaningful to the global market? or just a move of desperation to jumpstart their economy? Well, it, it could be meaningful uh, and, and, it, and it appears to be meaningful now as it's boosted their market, as I recall. Um, but in the big picture, I think China has got really a lot of problems ahead. You know, the, the, the games they've been playing and the numbers they give us, you, you can't believe any of them. Truly can't believe any of them. But you think about the cities they built. It's alone, the cities they built. I, mean, I have no idea how many, but it's unbelievable. They're sitting empty, these cities. So it, they have, this is central planning for you. They, right. Yeah. So, yeah. The, I, I see it as more of that move of desperation to jumpstart their economy um, and certainly, I think near term, it's going to be working in the market's favor. But the question is, do you really want to get extended when there's problems under the surface, which is why they're doing this to begin with? Okay, there's a question. The weekly chart of NVIDIA shows the PMO going down and below the signal line. How do you interpret it against the sharp chart? Carl said it's bullish. Well, let me go back to that. Um, here we go. Um, the yeah, th this is not good when the uh, PMO is going is falling below its signal line. That is a vulnerable of uh, situation there, but. When you look at what the chart is doing, we've had a major pullback and it's recovering from that. It's and it's basically starting to consolidate. So this consolidation could go on for quite a long time, or it could be over tomorrow. Uh, but no, this is this is showing this falling. It's showing it's losing strength, but it's still this PMO is twenty. That's really really high. Uh, as long as the price can stay, 
into this consolidation range, yeah, I don't think that's a problem at all. Okay. That covers that. Um, so I would just say to summarize about the case for a market top, because we did kind of go through there kind of quickly. I mean, really, it comes down to not only the way price action is reacting at this current um, push toward all-time highs, but all of our indicators are also turning down. Um, there are just a lot of problems out there that tell us we have to be careful. Right. And we have we have overbought condition, and overbought condition can last a long time, or it can be, you know, the the final bell when it hits the top and it starts heading down. But it's the market is definitely vulnerable here, and uh, uh, negative divergences, etc. So we're you know that's what we're looking for i'm not i'm not going short but uh, this is this market had been you know as a deadly short a candidate okay. yes all right okay so i'm going to move into the sector rotation section of this program and i think this also makes a case for a market top and the reason I say that is the majority of these sectors have PMOs that are headed downward or price action that is starting to consolidate or turn down. Um, in particular, the consumer discretionary area, we're getting a pullback toward a support level right now. Certainly could see a rebound off that level. Not saying we couldn't, but this is an aggressive area of the market. It's starting to fail. And then you have a defensive area of the market even failing. You can see consumer staples with a PMO that is headed lower very quickly. I'm going to talk about energy later. Uh, financials stuck beneath overhead resistance, um, struggling to get further up. Um, healthcare, a defensive area of the market, is really failing right now with the PMO getting very close to the zero line. We have a topping PMO on industrials. We have a topping PMO on materials. And we have a PMO in decline on real estate. Um, even utilities, which have been on a really nice run, are now getting ready to test this rising trend once again. We'll have to see if it can hold up. Um, but utilities have been looking very strong. But in this case, we do have a PMO top and a possible um, PMO sell signal on tap for utilities. So we may be looking at a bit of a pullback in this defensive area, um, as well as in as some of these other areas we're seeing that pullback and loss of momentum. Now I skip technology because technology is still giving us hints that maybe this isn't a market top because we do have the PMO bottoming above the signal line right now. Let me just make sure that's the case. Yes, there it is. PMO bottom above the signal line for technology. So, you know, the scooter is rising. This is an area that can lead the market higher. The problem is, is there are too many other sectors that are in decline. And while technology can hold things together, if it's the only sector going up, it's not going to hold the index higher. Um, Aaron, mm -hmm. while you're in this group, uh, we have a request for energy. Yes, we will go there next. Um, so certainly with technology, we are seeing some um, nice movement on that PMO, but we do have overhead resistance right here, and it could find um, resistance and turn back down at that point. So I'm cautiously optimistic on technology right now, but with everything else kind of in decline or losing their um, PMO um, buy signals, or at least their rising PMOs are going away, um, that really worries me about the market and the possibility of a market top. So that's another case for a market top. 
But let's go to the outlier energy. Energy has been doing quite well. We have a lot of unrest going on in the Middle East, obviously, with Iran and Iraq getting involved. Um, certainly, there are, there are problems going on out there with the Middle East, and that has been really pushing has really pushed the energy sector up much higher. Let me get to the energy chart real quick here. This is not in order, there we go. All right, so here's our under the hood chart for energy. Um, you know, subscriber, it, it, mentioned it on Friday and I have to I see his point that energy right now is looking a bit speculative. Um, we're getting a really big move to the upside on this Middle East tension. We've had Middle East tensions for quite some time. I don't know, you know, I'm not a political correspondent. I couldn't tell you whether it's more so a problem than it's been a problem, but you know, investors have gotten used to the idea of Middle East unrest, and we're seeing it again. But, you know, before long, I think investors are just going to be okay. You know, this is the new normal out there, and we'll see prices move back down. But for now, energy is doing very well. And I would just be a little bit um, careful. This is very parabolic, if you will, it's a vertical rally. You want to be very careful with that. Um, if you're in energy, probably some trailing stops might do you some good um, for some of these positions that may end up failing when the sentiment changes for energy. But right now, the technicals look really good. You've got a PMO above the zero line and rising. We have rising bottoms on the OBV. We have the silver cross index starting to increase and move higher. It's still below our 50% bullish threshold, but moving up very quickly. And we have a decent reading on the golden cross. This could be better. It's less than that bullish 50% threshold. It's running flat right now. But what we talk about is, um, kind of what is the delimiting factor, if you will, for the Golden Cross Index is the 200-day EMA. In order to get a 50-day moving average above its 200-day moving average, you need price above the 200-day moving average at least. That will at least preserve a golden cross as long as price is above the 200. So right now we have 64% above their 200-day EMA. And that is above the Golden Cross Index. So that tells me the Golden Cross Index should start to rise very soon. And I didn't talk about it, but we have 100% participation of stocks above their 20 and 50 day moving averages. That is incredible strength. That is the best strength you can have, obviously. And the question is, you know, it's as good as it gets before it gets as bad as it's going to get. But at this point, I see the silver cross is going to continue rising when you have this kind of participation. And if you look back here, overbought conditions can persist in a nice bull market move. And we could be looking at another longer term move here for um, energy. And that means that this these percentages are going to stick around. And you can see that that is the case, that can happen. Um, it took this time for them to be this overbought to get that silver cross up there. Uh, that's what I'm looking for right now is the silver cross getting back up to where it was and holding overbought conditions. But this again is I think really all, you know, the key is what's gonna happen with crude oil. And we have to be aware that that trade could go south. Uh, right now, it's a good trade, and energy looks like it's technically on its pathway to even higher prices. So that's my... Hmm? How about the weekly chart? Oh, yes. I should do that. I'm, I always forget to do that.
And there we have it. Nice breakout from a declining trend. We are in a bit of a trading range right now, but it does look like it's ready to break out here, um, breaking that declining trend. I like that. And you can see also that the weekly PMO is headed up toward a crossover buy signal. So it's, it's looking pretty positive. It's trend look, since 2020, at least. Yeah. It's, it's Beautiful a, rising trend. Yeah. Yeah, so there's, you know, everything tells us to expect more um, higher prices out of energy. I would just be careful with, with that crude oil trade. We've seen it gets volatile. And, you know, if we start to see people not worry about what's going on in the Middle East as much, um, production levels maybe will change. Um, we have to be um, nimble with that trade. All right. I think that covers sector rotation and energy. I do want to go in very quickly and look at the energy um, industry groups just to show you that they are very overbought, but there's still some opportunity in there. You go to the industry summary. We go down to the energy charts. This is the oil equipment and services chart getting ready to hit overhead resistance here at the 200-day EMA but a PMO now in the above the zero line. We have a really nice move going on with the integrated oil and gas, not a surprise, very strong PMO there. Exploration and production has now broken its long-term declining trend, and that's looking very positive to get more. We've got the PMO now back above the zero line. Pipelines are looking very good. And I, one thing I like about pipelines right now is they've been in a strong rising trend in spite of the oil trade not being on a rising trend. And that tells me that we're gonna get some follow through right here, but when we get the pullback, there's a good chance it's gonna hold this rising trend and that would be very good. I have to mention as well that the pipeline stocks, there are quite a few of them out there with very high yields. So you may want to check it within that group a little more closely. Coal also taking off right now. Golden Cross getting ready to occur. So coal looking very overbought. That would be my big problem with coal right now. Um, and really with all of these, they are overbought. But uh, the coal trade, I'm a little bit more nervous about. All right, that covers energy. That covers sector rotation. So now it is time for some symbol requests. Looks yeah, like the first one is. That, you know, one other item that with, is affecting energy is the uh, AI subject. We've mm. got, we've got uh, AI coming online all over the place and they need energy like crazy to run these AI databases, et cetera. So, I think that may be something that's driving energy in the background more so than the Middle East, because, you know, again, it's one of those things where the market says, how does this affect me? And right at this point, not much, I would say. Right. That. But that doesn't mean it can't get more serious, but, uh, but I think that's something to keep in mind. That's maybe where this, uh, yeah, surge in the energy sector is coming from. Certainly, something to consider as well. That's one of the reasons you know nuclear energy has been taking off. When you look at uranium right now, the discussion is you know we're going to bring Three Mile Island back for Microsoft. Um, this is an area of the market that's getting a lot of attention for that very reason of um, increased AI energy needs. So you can see the uranium trade starting to get even more interesting um, than it even has prior. So it's something to keep in mind for sure. Right. I wonder if they'll bring San Onofre plant back online. Which, yes. Which sits on a, a, a earthquake fault. So yes. it, a lot of things are being forgotten. I don't know. Uh, they didn't want uh, Three Mile Island running 50 years ago, but now now it's back. People have forgotten. Yeah, we'll have to see 
um, you know, in 50 years, hopefully the nuclear energy area is a little more safe than <laughs> before, but it'll be interesting to see how the, this goes. But that's really, when you're talking about alternative energy forms, that's one of the best ones out there. So it'll be interesting to see if we get more nuclear plants on online. Okay, R-O-A-D. All right. Okay, so we've got a flag formation, which looks good. Um, but we have a PMO that is in decline out of overbought territory. The stochastics have moved lower and relative strength. This is relative strength right here of the group to the S&P. So the group itself, heavy construction, has been doing quite well. It is outperforming the market. But when you look at the relative strength of road compared to the SPY, you can see that its relative strength has been declining. And when you compare it to its industry group, we definitely are looking at um, no leadership here. It is fading against its group. So we've got a weak member of the group as well. So this chart, I really wouldn't be interested in um, investing in. I do see that you've got that, that um, price movement off the 20-day EMA, but ultimately the indicators are too negative for my taste. Let's go ahead and we'll peek at a weekly. Oh, let me get the big one. So as you can see, we've got a nice rising trend here. So that's good. Um, PMO is above its signal line, above the zero line. So maybe not quite as negative in the intermediate term as it is still holding that rising trend. But it does look like it's headed back down to test the bottom of that, that right, trying to test that rising bottoms trend line. And that would mean a near term decline. So I think that's where we're headed right now. KRP. I wanted to say WKRP. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Um, break out above these prior tops, which basically busted what was forming a double top right over there. Um, looks like we may not be above this area of overhead resistance, but it does look like it's headed that direction. Um, I like the chart. I think everything looks pretty good on it. Um, this would be the only blemish, and that is that relative strength-wise, it's not competing well against its group. But ultimately, I don't like that. But as long as it's outperforming the S&P, I'll accept um, underperformance against the group. So at this point, it is rising as the group is against the SPY. Um, everything looks pretty good here. It is an extended rally, but the RSI isn't overbought yet, so we could see higher prices can come through here. All right, again, overhead resistance is the big problem, but notice weekly PMO is turned up. Um, you know, we're kind of digesting this previous rally here, but overall it's in a nice rising trend um broke out above this level of overhead resistance although it's still kind of been jumping around that level right there so maybe not that important but at this point looking at overhead resistance possibly a pullback but really it is it the weekly chart does look good eac victor Consumer Discretionary Hotels, Marriott Vacations, VAC. Um, bottoming formation, um, kind of a reverse head and shoulders look to it. Um, PMO's now above the zero line. Stochastics did turn up. Not the best relative strength I've seen, but certainly acceptable. It is traveling kind of in line with the S&P. And the S&P is up, so that's a good thing. Um, it's, I mean, it is a bottoming formation, but 
that 50 day EMA is so far below the 200 day EMA. With the market looking weak, it is traveling in line with the market, but if the market turns down as we're expecting it to, this stock is gonna not do so well. Um, and with that 50 so far below the 200, it's in a bear market situation. So while this does look like a decent bottoming formation, um, I'm I'm not really one to go um, bottom fishing at this point. This does seem a little bit of a bottom fish. So uh, not thrilled with the daily. Possible double bottom building here on the weekly chart, but overall it's in a big declining trend. So, you know, we're looking like we might get that rally and get that double bottom. Um, which is good. The weekly PMO is turning upward, but there is some downside pressure here and that that declining tops trend line is going to be hit soon. And there's a good chance you'll get a turnover at that point. Okay. Uh, I covered Microsoft, but I, I just answer the question. Uh, uh, he wants to know if it's uh, a buy. Is Microsoft a buy? Uh, yeah, I don't see it. No, I don't either. Uh, at this point, and they've got their their problems with uh, with the Justice Department. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, looking at the chart, weekly P or the PMO is in decline. Look at relative strength. I mean, if you want to go dipping into the software group, um, this isn't the stock to do that. Look at how it's underperforming its group. The group isn't doing that well either. So. Um, yeah, I wouldn't call it a buy at this point. CVS. CVS, <clears throat> CVS Health, pharmaceuticals. Um, you can see that we've got the breakout here above the 200-day EMA, which is good. Um, and this occurred after a little bit of consolidation once it hit that 200-day EMA. So it built up some momentum and pushed on through. Um, big, Not a big problem, but a problem would be that the RSI is overbought. Um, and that means that there's a good chance for another consolidation or pullback at this point. But at the same time, when it's on a nice rally like it is, it can hold overbought conditions. You can see back here, it was days that it held overbought conditions before it pulled back. But um, so I, I think that we do have some more upside to come here. Um, yeah, I mean, I like the look. The pharmaceuticals aren't doing so well against the S&P, but CVS is doing just fine against the S&P and the group itself. So I like the chart. I'm just, uh, I wish the RSI weren't overbought. Um, it would prevent me from personally getting involved just because it's due for some kind of a pause or pullback. I would watch it. And if I got that pause or pullback, like we had a little consolidation back here, um, that would be a pretty good entry. And the weekly. Again, bottoming formation here. It is in a declining trend in the longer term, and it is getting ready to test that declining tops trend line. Weekly PMO, though, P really pushing higher, looks better than it has in quite some time. Um, but we can see we had a nice PMO bottom back here, and it took a little while before things really got going. So um, we're getting a good rally, could see some follow through. Um, Looks okay to me. I think it's uh, in a declining trend, though, still. Yeah, it's going to test it, too, so we'll have to keep an eye out. SGH. S, yeah. Semiconductors. All right. So semiconductors are looking pretty good right now. You've got, this is a good example it looks a lot like SMH, the semiconductor chart. We have a double bottom here. Um, didn't didn't um, confirm because we didn't get the breakout above the confirmation line. So there's still some work to do here. But we do have a PMO that's now above the zero line. 
I think my big problem right now for semiconductors, they do look good, but the market just doesn't. The market doesn't look very good. And they're very much tied to what the market is going to do. And so we're going to have some problems likely for semiconductors should that market turn lower like we believe it will. Um, but we do have a rising trend on SGH, PMO getting in positive territory, stochastics turning up. So there are a lot of good things on this chart. Um, struggling against that 200-day EMA, though. I, I, I personally am not excited about getting involved in semiconductors. I do own a semiconductor, um, but I'm not ready to add another. And I'm really watching very closely to see if the double bottom on my semiconductor is going to hold up. Um, so... I own one, but I'm not really interested in getting another at this point. Let's look at the weekly chart. Really in a sideways trading range, it's a very wide one, but um, yeah, I mean, it could be headed up toward the top of that range. The weekly PMO is looking a little bit soft, um, not really behind a big move to the upside do have a little bit of a rising trend going on here. But notice when you draw the rising trend line from this bottom to this bottom, you have a breakdown. So it's it's looking um, soft right now. I think that there is some upside um, possible here, but not a lot. Okay, ASML. Never, another semiconductor. Um, I like this one less. Um, really struggled at the 200-day EMAs headed downward. Um, we do have the double bottom going on here, but notice here that we do have relative strength against the group is starting to fail. And so that tells me I don't have a leader in this area. And if I'm going to get involved with the semiconductor, I want a leader. Stochastics have topped and are headed lower, and the PMO is below the zero line here. So I'm not a fan of this chart. Let's go ahead of the weekly one. And it is in a declining trend right now in the shorter term. Um, do have a rising trend, and it does look like it is ready to bounce off of that, but the weekly PMO is in decline. I noticed that 17-week EMA is getting ready to cross below the 43-week EMA. Um, that's a bad sign. Um, I'm I'm not a fan of this one. Okay, um, GES. Apparel retailers, guess. Um, you know, we do have what looks like a double bottom forming here, but really it's just prices moving sideways. It's not at all headed toward that confirmation line. Um, PMO is below the zero line. Look at the apparel retailers group really starting to suffer against the S&P. That's enough for me to not be involved in apparel retailers. Um, that's some serious underperformance going on there. Guess is staying in line with the market currently, but uh, this is going to be some downside pressure, and that's probably what's being felt right now. Um, I think there's some possibility for some upside here, but there looks like there's a lot of downside pressure, and that PMO should be above the zero line um, for me to get excited about a breakout above the 200-day EMA. Let's look at the weekly. Uh, broke its rising trend, so that's not a good sign. Weekly PMO is dropped beneath the zero line. That's not a good sign. We have a short-term declining trend here, which is not a good sign. 17-week EMA is below the 43-week EMA, another not-so-good sign. Um, so I'm not liking the weekly chart. I'm not really that impressed with the daily chart. CLB. All right, core laboratories, oil equipment and services. I like this chart. There's pretty much a textbook 
reverse head and shoulders. There's your head, left shoulder, right shoulder. And the pattern has been confirmed with the breakout above the neckline, which is drawn from this top to that top. Um, looks like we have a golden cross just about ready to occur. And the silver cross isn't too far away with the 20 coming up to meet the 50 day EMA. Our, the PMI, the, the PMO has um, moved above the zero line. I like the look of this chart a lot. Um, I think this one looks very good in the short term. Let's look at it on a weekly chart. It's kind of in a sideways range, not much um, to be said here, except it does look like it's headed back to the top of the range, which would be good. And the weekly PMO is turned back up above the zero line and is given us a crossover buy signal currently. So um, I like uh, core laboratories right now. DVN. All right. Exploration and production, Devon Energy. We've got a breakout above this prior top, which is a good sign. Kind of a double bottom look on it. Um, the big problem I have, you know, we've looked at the crude oil trade is great. We've looked at the energy chart, which is great. And we're getting a nice rally out of this one. But overall, it's in a declining trend. Um, the 50-day EMA is well below the 200-day EMA. So it's in a bear market configuration. Um, PMO is turning back up and it has made a move to the upside, but it's below the zero line. And this could be more of a diminishing weakness rather than new strength. Um, relative strength looks pretty good here though. So I would say it's kind of a wishy-washy chart. I think we could find a better, um, uh, better energy chart just because I don't like this big declining trend that I'm seeing on this one. Let's go to the weekly. You can see that declining trend is a bit of a problem. Um, it broke down below this level of support. It is returning back to um, its rally, which looks good. It could be heading back to the top of the trading range it's been in. And the weekly PMO is turned up. Um, but ultimately, like I said, I think we could find something better than this. I could see um, getting involved in it because it is um, coming off of the uh, lows from before, but uh, wishy-washy. XOP. All um, right, another one. Half minutes. Okay. Let's sail through this. Um, reverse head, shoulder, left shoulder, right shoulder, breakout. Um, in a declining trend as well, just like Devon Energy, um, but above its 200-day EMA, um, RSI looking like it's going to get a little overbought here, so we might get a little bit of consolidation above the 200-day EMA. Um, PMO is now above the zero line, which is good. Um, stochastics are above 80. I like the look of the chart. Um, I'm not like thrilled with it, but I like it. Hey, I see. Oh, you're going to do weekly? Okay. Yeah, real quick. Um, sideways training range. Looks like it's coming off the bottom of it. So there is um, some bullishness to uh, XOP right now. I see. Intercontinental Exchange, I see. Um, looks like it's topping. Um, I'm not liking this. PMO's top beneath the signal line. RSI is moving into negative territory. Stochastic's topped. Um, don't like the chart. Let's go to the weekly. And the weekly chart looks much better. We've got a nice rising trend. Um, RSI was overbought, but it's moved back down. Um, could be a high level consolidation here to, to get ready for another move back up. But I have to say, I don't like that PMO, the weekly PMO's topping. It looks like it's ready to pull back a little bit toward the rising trend line. Um, all right, that is about all we have. Um, I didn't go and show you our lovely website. I always forget to do the commercials. Um, so here you go, here's our homepage. 
We have Decision Point Alert and Decision Point Diamonds. Right now, if you want to get a two-week trial of either of the publications or our new Scan Alert system, where we mail you, email you the stock symbols from our exclusive diamond scans. And you can get any of these three for two weeks for free using coupon code DPTRIAL2. That will get you two free weeks of any of our reports or services, and you can give us a try. Do give us a try. We love doing these free trading rooms, but we gotta make a living as we say. So go in and give us a shot. All right, that's all I have for you today. We have completed our decision point trading room. Um, again, give our products a good try and stay alert. This does look like a market top developing. Good luck and good trading.